How to build faster and better with Claude Sonnet. Hello guys and welcome. In this short video I want to share with you a few of my uh, research or learnings regarding how to build better, faster and easier with Claude. And some of the stuff might come across as straightforward but um, these are realizations that I had after going back and forth many times with Claude and I hope that you will find them useful. So first of all, let me share with you a screenshot, a screenshot of what I did. This is just a, a personal project. Uh, what I built the other day was a prompt library, which is kind of similar. It's not this one, it's a different one. It's kind of similar to a canned responses extension in which let's say that you have a response that you use very often let's say your address or your phone number so you can just save it in the Chrome uh, it's great for customer support it's great for uh, call outreach it's great for many use cases so I decided to build this Chrome extension which is basically I call it a prompt saver and as you can see here I can write down the prompt this is a test prompt then I can add tags separated by commas, so test1, test2, let's save the prompt. And over here I have all the saved prompts. I can see when the prompt was added, the different tags, so if the prompt has a specific use case, or if it has a specific uh, LLM that I use it more often with. Over here I have different ways in which I can search prompts. So let's say I want to look only for prompts that have the word Gemini. So G-E-M. No, it only it doesn't look at the tags. So let's take database data. As you can see, it filtered out that prompt. Let's remove this and you can see all the other prompts. I can filter by tags. So let's say I want the tag content. You can see content prompts. I have only pr one prompt with the content prompt tag. So as soon as I start writing this, it writes this and I can sort by date added, sort by usage and sort alphabetically. Anytime you hit the copy button, it just saves the usage and it increases the usage. So this way I know what are my most uh, useful prompts and I can use them more often. I just sort by usage. So long story short, this um, prompt, this Chrome extension was written 100% by Claude and it is functional and working. If you want me to send it over to you, let me know. You can contact me via uh, LinkedIn and I'll be happy to share this uh, Chrome extension with you. Anyway, I wanted to create a more complex version that would look better and not and won't be in this tiny window, but actually in a bigger window and look better. So I went back and forth with Claude until I realized a few best practices in order to build this app. So I want to share them with you today. So first of all, obviously we want to give a very detailed and thorough prompt and we also want to start sharing screenshots. So when you add a screenshot to the prompt, it helps Claude in generate better uh, solutions or better output. So what I did over here, I just took a screenshot of the Chrome extension and I wrote down, you are a front-end developer with experience in creating beautiful looking UX UI, simple and useful solutions. Help me build a web app in React, which will be a personal prompt library. Users can save their prompts or responses. They can assign them in categories, give them tags. Then they can edit their prompt, copy them or delete them. They should have ability to filter based on tags, keywords, categories, usage amount, date added, etc. They should also be able to import new prompts and we should instruct them how to format the prompts and also the ability to export prompts. I'm attaching an image to give you a general idea, a mock-up and another image from the Webflow homepage to show you the style in terms of design that I'd like. So I added the both images. One is the Chrome extension screenshot and another screenshot from the Webflow homepage and it created this web app, this uh, preview of the web app. This is the first version. So the first version through an error. So what I usually do when I get this error, and you will get it pretty often, you just 
copy and paste the arrow over here and it will solve this. Take a look over here, this is the history, I just copied and pasted it and it said that it apologizes for the confusion and it created this. Now, this is the prompt library it is created. Look how slick is the design, you have the date, usage, um, headline, etc. I can add over here, enter a prompt test YouTube video one, enter tag, so let's say test and enter category prompt testing. We save the prompt. It doesn't automatically add it, but when we apply the filters, as you can see here, we have filters by keyword, filters by what did I ask by tags and by content. As you can see here, it added the new prompt. Prompt testing, test, YouTube, and video, and we can see the date of the date we added the prompt and obviously we can edit it here and also copy it but this is just a preview and obviously we can take it afterwards and work with it on visual studio editor but what i wanted to share with you today besides these tips of just adding mockups which is very helpful i wanted to show you the ability to publish artifacts so what you can do you can click here on the published and then copy the link and open it and then you can share this with team members or friends or colleagues or whatever. This is the artifact. And what your team members can do, they can remix the artifact, which basically tells uh, Claude to take the artifact. And you can just continue working on this specific artifact. Let me show you how it looks like. So we hit the remix artifact button and we can come here and you can see the exact prompt that it gave. So remix instru instructions. This is also interesting in terms of seeing how the Anthropic team crafted the prompt. So the following is an artifact created from an earlier conversation. Please begin the conversation by pre-producing the content in the appropriate artifact line, line by line without any change. Doing so will render the artifact in the, artifact in the UI and allow the user to interact with it. To maintain functionality and usefulness, any changes and remixes created in this conversation should maintain the full content each time without omission. Do not leave comments. Now this is the artifact, title, prompt library, component. This is the type, which if you guys haven't, saw, haven't seen my other video about the Claude the leaked prompt, I highly recommend you check it out. I think I published it like a three or four videos ago. Just check it out in the YouTube channel. And you can see here the whole code. This is the artifact and this is actually what it suggests. After it reproduced the artifact over here, it suggests three ways we could remix this prompt library React component and basically or adding a dark mode or implementing local storage or adding a prompt generation feature. We could integrate an AI powered prompt generation feature. This would involve adding a new button that when clicked send a request to an AI service like OpenAI GPT-3, which is funny that Claude suggests OpenAI, probably didn't think about this in their uh, training data. Now let's say, please add dark mode and make buttons of sorting and filtering bigger Everything should be mobile responsive. Everything should be mobile responsive. Uh, we'll show you something cool in a moment. I just, you see here, it generates the preview. After it generates the preview, I want to show you how useful it is just to take a screenshot of the preview and add stuff using paint or canva or whatever and this allows the cloud multimodel to better visually understand what you're looking for and then it creates a solution faster without needing to guide it using text you will understand in a moment let's see what it does okay so here we have the dark mode it doesn't work at the moment but it just added this feature now we have the filter prompts and okay so what I want to do I want to 
take this let's say you want to take this let's go to Canva let's say it doesn't really matter actually what we can do is even easier take a screenshot like this filter prompts sorry I meant to capture now first line third line below the button I just want to show you how it uh, if this is the goal is supposed to understand my instructions second line change to pink color okay let's copy this and upload it to here make adjustments based on text adjustments based on the image okay so it realized certainly I'll make the adjustment to the prompt library component based on the image you provided I'll update the filter inputs, add a drop down for sorting, and change the color of the apply filter button. Let's see exactly what it does. And this is very, assuming it will work, this is very useful because instead of going back and forth and explaining, which is sometimes very tedious, check this out. So, filter by, uh, this is amazing. I love it. So, first line, second line, filter by. So, we didn't do below the button but it did change all the lines filter by this is the second line it also did incorrectly but it did create all the lines and it did change the color probably I had please note my request about placing the sort drop down below the button it will change it now but this obviously defeats the purpose of what I wanted to show you of using instructions in the multimodal in the uh, actual image but still it is very powerful and very useful the other day I wanted to build a different web app so what I did I just went to a competitor uh, solution I just copied and pasted all the images of his website added some instructions and as you can see here filter prompts filter by and Right here we have the drop down. Let me do like this. Give me step by step. Let's see if it step-by-step -step instructions how to run this locally on my computer using Visual Studio Code. If I need to install anything, please let me know. I often use this uh, feature by Microsoft. I'm sure Mac users have this feature as well of just basically using the microphone in order to give instructions to the LLM. As it's way more efficient, it's easier to explain and easier to um, tell the LLM exactly what you want. Now let's see what happens. So it says it will provide me with the complete code. Here's the complete code. In a moment it will provide instructions and I think we'll wrap it up.
The whole idea of this video was first of all to show you how easy it is to build simple web apps these days. As you can see here, you go to Node, install Visual Studio Code, create a React project, open Visual Studio Code, install dependencies, install, te uh, install Tailwind, etc. Anyway, the idea for the video is to show you how powerful is Cloud, how useful it is to use um, screenshots when you provide the specifications of a new project, the usefulness of publishing artifacts and sharing it with your teammates, and basically um, how powerful and how fast things can be built with the correct prompts. And it does take a lot of going back and forth in order to understand what's the best way to structure the prompt and how the LLMs are producing better output. Another thing that I forgot to mention, which I found very useful, when I built a very complex project, I, I saw that the LLM does a lot of mistakes in terms of routing. And this is why I asked it to build a flat file which contained all the code in one file. And then whenever it had to adjust small things based on my feedback, it only had to adjust one file. And then all the different route, it took care of the different routing and different dependencies between functions. So using a flat file is also something that I find useful. Obviously it's not good for production level, but when you're just building, it can be a, a nice workaround to have the LLM update everything. Um, I tried using continue dev, which is the Chrome extension, the Visual Studio extension that allows you to like, it's like a code editor or AI code companion. But when the project is very big, it doesn't know exactly how to fetch all the context. Even if you provide it like the code base as context, it still does a lot of mistakes. So this is why I believe having like a flat file is pretty useful. Yeah, I guess that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video a bit all over the show and longer than I expected. But um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like uh, and subscribe. If you didn't, please leave a comment below. Let me know what did you learn, what you didn't enjoy, so we can keep on optimizing and growing. And until next time, keep on automating.